frozen silence, a body in the snow. The snow-covered fields of rural Quebec held a secret, a gruesome one. A farmer, going about his daily chores, stumbled upon a site that would etch itself into the memories of the province. A frozen body lay half buried in the snow, its eyes staring blankly at the unforgiving sky. The man was dressed in a fine suit, his face contorted in a silent scream. He was a far cry from the usual inhabitants of this quiet farmland. This was no ordinary death. This was the calling card of the Canadian Mafia. The body belonged to Vito Rizzuto, a prominent member of the Rizzuto crime family. His murder, a brazen execution in broad daylight, sent shockwaves through the Canadian underworld and beyond. It was a testament to the brutal reality of organized crime in Canada, a world where power struggles, betrayals and violence were commonplace. This incident, as shocking as it was, offered a chilling glimpse into the heart of Canadian organized crime. The story of Vito Rizzuto, his rise to power and his eventual demise is just one thread in the complex tapestry of Canadian organized crime. The Canadian underworld is a complex and multifaceted entity. It's not a single monolithic organization, but a network of distinct groups, each with its own history, structure and modus operandi. From the notorious mafia families of Montreal to the sprawling Hells Angels motorcycle gangs, from the secretive Asian triads to the emerging Aboriginal crime groups, the Canadian criminal landscape is as diverse as the country itself. These groups are bound by a common thread, the pursuit of power and profit. They operate in the shadows, their influence felt in legitimate businesses, in politics and in law enforcement. They traffic drugs, launder money, extort businesses and engage in violence to protect their interests and eliminate rivals. Their activities have a corrosive effect on Canadian society, undermining the rule of law and eroding public trust. Despite their differences, these groups often collaborate, forming alliances based on mutual benefits. They share information, resources and expertise, creating a sophisticated criminal network that spans the country. This interconnectedness makes it more challenging for law enforcement to combat organized crime, as striking at one group can have ripple effects throughout the entire network. Understanding the intricacies of this criminal underworld is crucial to developing effective strategies to counter its influence. The Rizzuto crime family, based in Montreal, is a prime example of the reach and power of the Canadian Mafia. For decades, the Rizzutos held sway over the city's underworld, their influence extending into construction, gambling, drug trafficking and other illicit activities. They operated with impunity, their wealth and connections shielding them from the reach of the law. Vito Rizzuto, the patriarch of the family, was a cunning and ruthless leader. He forged alliances with other criminal organizations, expanding the family's reach across Canada and into the United States. He cultivated relationships with corrupt officials, ensuring his operations remained uninterrupted. Under his leadership, the Rizzutos became one of the most powerful mafia families in North America. However, the Rizzuto empire was not immune to the tides of fate. A series of investigations and prosecutions in the late 20th century weakened the family's grip on power. Vito Rizzuto himself was imprisoned in the United States for his role in a triple murder. His absence created a power vacuum, leading to internal strife and challenges from rival gangs. The assassination of Vito Rizzuto in 2013 marked a turning point for the family, ushering in a period of uncertainty and instability. The Hells Angels Motorcycle Club is another prominent player in the Canadian underworld. With chapters across the country, they are a formidable force, known for their violent tactics and their involvement in drug trafficking, extortion, and other criminal activities. They cultivate an image of rebellion and outlaw culture, attracting individuals who seek a life outside the bounds of conventional society. The Hells Angels have a strict hierarchy and a code of silence, making it difficult for law enforcement to penetrate their ranks. They use intimidation and violence to maintain control over their territories and to silence anyone who dares to challenge them. Their influence extends into legitimate businesses, using their reputation to extort money from unsuspecting victims. The Hells Angels are constantly vying for power, engaging in turf wars with rival gangs, most notably the Rock Machine Motorcycle Club. These conflicts have resulted in numerous deaths leaving a trail of violence and fear across the country. 
The Hells Angels' brazen disregard for the law and their propensity for violence make them a significant threat to public safety and a persistent challenge for law enforcement agencies across Canada. Section 5. Asian Organized Crime Triads and Tongs Asian organized crime groups, including triads and tongs, have a long history in Canada, dating back to the late 19th century. These groups originated in China, their roots intertwined with secret societies and underworld activities. They established themselves in Canadian cities with large Chinese populations, their influence extending into gambling, extortion and human trafficking. Triads, known for their hierarchical structure and their elaborate initiation rituals, are involved in a wide range of criminal activities, including drug trafficking, money laundering and smuggling. Tongs, often associated with street gangs and local criminal operations, operate in specific neighborhoods, controlling illicit businesses and extorting money from local residents. Asian organized crime groups are known for their secrecy and their use of violence to maintain control. They often target members of their own community, using cultural ties and fear of reprisal to silence victims and witnesses. Their operations extend beyond Canada's borders connecting them to international criminal networks and facilitating the smuggling of drugs, weapons and other contraband. Section 6. Aboriginal Crime Groups, Shadows in the North Aboriginal crime groups have emerged as a significant force in the Canadian underworld. Their activities concentrated in remote communities and urban centres with large Aboriginal populations. These groups are often rooted in poverty, marginalization, and a lack of economic opportunities, factors that contribute to the allure of criminal activity. Aboriginal crime groups are involved in drug trafficking, smuggling, and violence, exploiting the vulnerabilities of their communities. They often operate with impunity, taking advantage of the limited law enforcement presence in remote areas and the reluctance of victims to cooperate with authorities. The rise of Aboriginal crime groups is a symptom of the deeper social and economic challenges facing Aboriginal communities in Canada. Addressing these underlying issues is crucial to breaking the cycle of poverty and crime that plagues these communities. Investing in education, job creation and community development programs can provide alternatives to criminal activity and empower Aboriginal youth to build a better future. Section 7 the Wolf Pack, a true crime saga. The Wolf Pack, a notorious alliance of organized crime figures from different backgrounds, exemplifies the interconnectedness of the Canadian underworld. This group, formed in the 1990s, brought together members of the Hells Angels, the Mafia and street gangs, uniting them in a shared pursuit of profit and power. The Wolf Pack's operations spanned the country, their reach extending into drug trafficking, money laundering and extortion. They operated with a ruthless efficiency, their members bound by a code of loyalty and silence. Their reign of terror left a trail of violence and fear, their activities impacting communities across Canada. The Wolfpack story is a chilling reminder of the dangers of collaboration between organized crime groups. When different criminal elements join forces, they can become a formidable threat, their combined resources and expertise making them more difficult to combat. The Wolf Pack's reign of terror eventually came to an end, but their legacy serves as a cautionary tale about the ever-evolving nature of organized crime in Canada. Section 8. Undercover Operations – Infiltrating the Underworld Law enforcement agencies across Canada employ various strategies to combat organized crime, including undercover operations. These operations involve highly trained officers infiltrating criminal organizations, gathering evidence, and exposing their activities. Undercover work is a dangerous and demanding task, requiring courage, cunning, and an ability to blend seamlessly into the criminal underworld. Undercover officers assume false identities, immersing themselves in the world of organized crime. They gain the trust of criminals, participating in their activities, and documenting their conversations. These operations can last for months or even years, putting officers at considerable risk. Undercover operations have proven effective in dismantling criminal organizations, leading to arrests, seizures of illegal goods, and the disruption of criminal activities. However, these operations are complex and resource-intensive, requiring careful planning, meticulous execution, and the cooperation of multiple agencies. 
The success of undercover work hinges on the skills and dedication of the officers involved, who put their lives on the line to bring criminals to justice. Section 9. The Cost of Crime, a Society Held Hostage. Organized crime exacts a heavy toll on Canadian society. Its impact felt far beyond the immediate victims of criminal activity. The illicit activities of organized crime groups generate billions of dollars annually, fueling a shadow economy that undermines legitimate businesses and deprives the government of tax revenue. The violence associated with organized crime creates a climate of fear and insecurity, eroding public trust in institutions and undermining the rule of law. Drug trafficking fuels addiction, leading to health problems, social decay and increased crime rates. Human trafficking exploits vulnerable individuals, subjecting them to unimaginable horrors and robbing them of their dignity. The fight against organized crime is not just a matter of law enforcement, it requires a comprehensive approach that addresses the social and economic factors that contribute to criminal activity. Investing in education, job creation and community development programs can provide opportunities for individuals who might otherwise be drawn into the criminal underworld. Strengthening social services and providing support for victims of crime can help to mitigate the devastating consequences of organized crime. Section 10, the Canadian difference, a unique brand of madness. Canadian organized crime exhibits unique characteristics that distinguish it from its counterparts in other parts of the world. The vastness of the country, its diverse population, and its relatively stable political climate create a unique environment in which criminal organizations operate. The Canadian underworld is characterized by a degree of cooperation and pragmatism, with groups often choosing collaboration over outright conflict. Canadian criminals are known for their low-key approach, preferring to operate discreetly and avoid attracting undue attention. They are also known for their adaptability, readily embracing new technologies and exploiting emerging opportunities. This combination of discretion, adaptability and collaboration has made Canadian organized crime a formidable force, its influence extending far beyond the country's borders. The Canadian underworld's unique characteristics present a challenge for law enforcement agencies, requiring innovative strategies and a deep understanding of the criminal landscape. International cooperation is essential to combat transnational criminal networks, sharing intelligence and coordinating efforts to disrupt criminal activities. The fight against organized crime is an ongoing battle, requiring constant vigilance, adaptability, and a commitment to upholding the rule of law. Section 11, Fighting Back, A Glimmer of Hope. Despite the pervasive nature of organized crime in Canada, there is hope. Law enforcement agencies are becoming increasingly sophisticated in their approach to combating organized crime, utilizing advanced technologies, data analytics, and international cooperation to disrupt criminal networks. Public awareness campaigns are educating citizens about the dangers of organized crime, encouraging them to report suspicious activity and support law enforcement efforts. Community organizations are working to address the root causes of crime, providing opportunities for youth, supporting victims, and promoting social cohesion. These efforts, while not always visible, are making a difference, chipping away at the foundation of organized crime and creating a safer and more just society. The fight against organized crime is a marathon, not a sprint. It requires a sustained effort, a commitment to justice, and a belief in the power of collective action. By working together, law enforcement agencies, community organizations, and citizens can create a future where organized crime no longer casts its long shadow over Canada.